This is where Bactria makes their last stand. Hey, how's it going? My name is Jackie Fish and welcome back to another online battle. This battle was taken from the head-to-head -head divide at Impera stream that me and Republic of Play are currently doing every Tuesday and Thursday over on Twitch TV. So make sure you go ahead and tune in every Tuesday and Thursday. There's going to be a little bit of a break over the Christmas holidays, but we'll be back, I think, in about a week or so's time. Uh, you know, I think it's the first Tuesday after Christmas itself or maybe the, the one after that. But yeah, anyway, make sure you tune in. Just go ahead and hit that follow button. Join the Discord. You always get notified whenever we go live. But yeah, this battle was taken uh, from one of the bat live stream battles we had during the campaign. I'm playing as Macedon and Darren is playing as India. So the fact that I'm playing as Macedon, obviously you might be a little bit confused if you've never seen these head-to-head -head battles before. Basically, whenever Darren fights someone or uh, fights the AI, I get to control the AI army, which makes the campaign campaign is so interesting so obviously in this example I'm playing as Bactria because Darren's fighting the AI Bactria you know I'm off in Macedon doing my own things however Darren still has to try and get past me if he wants to win battles so yes I am playing as Bactria and this is kind of like the last stand of the Bactrian Darren has basically pushed them back to their last city uh, back to you, do have more men than this though this battle is a six, uh, 40 unit versus 60 unit battle Darren has 60 units on his side with the support of a Parthian army, which is why I've got this game port. When there's another army or another faction in these battles, the AI controls them. So you're going to see a Parthian army coming on the field that Darren managed to get on his side for this battle and they attack my Bactrians. I also have plenty of reinforcements coming in from all over the map, so you'll see that very, very quickly. But yeah, this battle is really important that Darren won this because if he loses this, it just puts him so far back and allows the Bactrians to kind of rebuild and start being aggressive and actually take back their cities that Darren have taken from them. However, if Darren wins this battle right here, then he basically goes ahead and, you know, secures his dominance in the region. And then he can start looking to push, you know, into the Seleucid territory or the Atropatan territory. I don't know how to pronounce their name. But as you can see, the Parthians immediately come on. And this was a really nice diplomatic move by Darren. Originally, he was at war with the, uh, the Parthians for, for so goddamn long. And you can see this cavalry catching me off guard a little bit. The heavy Parthian horse are. Uh, horses are just so goddamn strong and they're going to be harassing all of my spearmen you can see i didn't even realize they were coming on and i quickly had to rotate my formation and this is an entire parthian horse army luckily it's controlled by the ai because darren's already controlling an army in this in this battle so i kind of got lucky there and the ai will obviously be very aggressive and i, I can kind of use my men effectively just to kind of corner these guys off I've got reinforcements coming on over here and also over here. So, yeah, I have a lot of soldiers in this battle. I have over 40 uh, units in total. But, yeah, these Parthians are going to make me bleed. And if I, once I kill the Parthians over here, I then have to deal with Darren's army, which is currently hiding in the forest. Darren has 40 units of himself. So, you know, this is kind of just a really bad distraction. But as I was saying, this is a really good move diplomatically, a good campaign movement that Darren went ahead and achieved because... Sorry, let me just turn down the music a little bit as well. It's kind of loud. Um, I'll just do it this way, actually. There we go. I think it's because we are having an epic battle on the live stream and I've turned it up a little bit. But as I said, Darren did a great job at actually, you know, client stating these guys just before this battle happened. So he managed to get these guys on his side and bring them into a battle. Whereas before, they would have gone and joined Bactria because... You know, even though the Bactrians weren't allied, they were, you know, both at war with Darren's India. So as you can see, me playing as Bactria, I'm trying to cut, like, like kind of almost kennel these guys in. Use my heavy Bactrian shot cavalry, just firing, throwing these guys in, trying to kill a lot of the lighter skirmisher cavalry that these guys do have. However, there's so many horses, and they're proving a pretty big issue. I'm also bringing over more reinforcements on the left-hand side as well as best as I can. Uh, I basically got all my cavalry engaging in against the Parthians, which uh, let me tell you is no easy task. The Parthians have just some of the best cavalry in the game. I think second to only the steppe cavalry up in the north of the map, like kind of like in the Crimea Russian area. Yeah, I, I haven't got as much shot cavalry as the Parthians either, but you know, all this Parthian army has to do is just kind of whittle me down 
which will make the battle against Darren much easier. As you can see as well, Darren's going to be throwing all of his cavalry over here. A lot of my cavalry is already engaged. However, my secondary army that has come in, I managed to get a lot more of this battery or a lot more of these kind of, yeah, these are the cavalry I'm talking about. They're like a skirmisher hybrid shot cavalry. They're of the nomadic tribes to the north, so they're extremely good. And I've managed to actually bait Darren's cavalry up. A lot of the time with the new changes, you cannot see. Look, look at this. These units are actually hidden right now in the battle. Darren can't see them. So I've kind of almost managed to surprise him a little bit by charging out and catching his cavalry off guard. And the Indian cavalry is not like top tier. It's like medium tier. It's not bad, but it's also not going to stand up to like heavy battery and shock cavalry at all. Or even this, this step cavalry kind of shock cavalry as well. They're really, really good, let me tell you. And also, as well as that, I've also got all my infantry turning up as well. So, you know, I'm, I'm trying my best, basically, just to try and catch as much of Darren's cavalry here as I can. Um, but unfortunately, I'm still losing a lot of horses over on this left-hand side to all the Parthians. There's so many of them still left remaining on the battlefield. And, you know, Darren, if he wanted to, could be really aggressive here. I'm trying to chase off his horses as well. I actually get a nice rear charge into the back of one of his medium melee cavalry. And they're going to be, you know, taking heavy casualties as they try and pull out over here as well. I also managed to catch another unit of cavalry. Um, Darren also has gone pretty deep here with his horsemen. Very risky. But with the most recent changes to uh, the divided in pair of spotting system, you can really set up amazing ambushes. Like, I think normally in the older version of the game, I would be able to see Darren's entire army here. But because... I can't, you know, because of the new spotting. Look, look at that. This unit of horses just came out of nowhere because they were in dense forest. And I just love that. I think it adds so much awesome stuff to the game. Uh, I think this could actually be one of his generals as well. Yeah, I think this might be one of his general units he's actually throwing in to the battle. Which is pretty goddamn nice, you know, that I can engage. But I'm also killing a lot of horses. He also engaged me right here with so much of his cavalry. And this is just such a perfect opportunity for me to you know, take out Darren's cavalry here if I can. Because realistically, a lot of my horses are dying to the Parthians. That fight is still going on back there. Also, check the AI out as well. They're like hammer and anviling this general unit right now. I'm trying my best to kill them, but the Parthians are just tough buggers. They really are. Um, I've, I've kind of managed to kennel these guys enough and I've got pikemen in here as well. The pikemen seem to be doing a very, very nice job. Luckily, there's no friendly fire with the pikemen because that would be brutal if that was the case. But you guys can already see like just how awesome these head-to-head -head battles are, you know? Like they really just have stepped up in having the AI Parthia come in as well just really changed up the battle. And it was a really interesting move because I feel like if I was Darren, I would have just pushed the attack on this uh, on this Bactrian army. Because I believe Darren's army is a lot more concise. They, his reinforcements came on from back here or something and just reinforced this mainline hiding here. You know, and I feel like if I was Darren, I'd want to try and seize the opportunity of all the disruption that's going on around here against the Parthians. Um, however, Darren decided to stick back and just kind of use his cavalry to, to basically just skirmish with my horses, which I think is a great idea as well. Definitely a, a good strategy to see that kind of, kind of coming off as well. And that's also one of the awesome things about these head to head. Like me and Darren, I think in skill level are very even. But we definitely have different strategies in battles. And it is really cool to kind of see them strategies kind of come off. And then it's also awesome when you, when you get to play as other factions. Uh, a battle you guys will see, I think, in a, a couple of days is a battle where I get to control an entire horse archer army again, which is just really fun to kind of see how that, that battle has developed and if Darren has learned stuff from the previous engagement. Because if you guys have missed it, uh, in one of, I've done another one of these replays where I got to play as a horse archer army and I almost won against pretty superior odds. It was a great battle. I've managed to basically push the Indian cavalry back into a retreat, back to the main battle line, which is nice. I feel like I definitely came out on top of that engagement. However, Darren definitely did do a great job at kind of basically just stopping me from dealing with the Parthians. And I am still fighting them as well. You know, the Parthian cavalry is just so tough, as I keep on saying. These guys actually have three golden chevrons. You know, they're actually really good as well. Look at their armor. They don't, they're not equipped with like a shield or anything, but you know, they're just such a good hybrid unit. Thankfully, my pikes are kind of doing the job, bringing them down to size, but 
Yeah, I'm definitely taking casualties and I'm finally starting to get my army back up to, you know, where, where I want it to be up to full strength and that cavalry engagement in the forest was very telling I mean and also one of the amazing things about the new line of sight is I have really no idea what Darren has you know like yeah I saw some of his army as it kind of comes out of here now like yeah I saw it at the beginning but you know I, I can't I don't know how much cavalry he has left I don't know you know how many spears he have like I haven't really counted that so not being able to see his army is also kind of scary because I don't know how long his line stretches. I don't know how many lines deep he has, how many archers he has set up. So that's why I just love the new system. And again, Darren doesn't really know mine besides these Parthians. I mean, I mean like all the cavalry hiding here and stuff, he also doesn't really know. I did lose a bunch of infantry and also cavalry in this fight. You can see a lot of my, my axemen are very depleted. Also, these Bactrian infantry, this is my main infantry line, really. I believe I have like six or seven pikes and then a bunch of these guys right here. They're not very good. They're extremely lightly armored. These guys are much more meant for a flanking shock infantry than a front line. But this is all I've kind of really got. So I'm going to have to use these guys as kind of that. I do have some heavy hop lights, which is good. These are my Bactrian generals. I have the pikemen and also I have the cavalry. I have a lot of horse. Uh, but it's going to be hard to use it, you know, when I don't have the infantry to back them up. I also have some horse archers and stuff, which will be doing plenty of damage. But that's really the only archer force I have, which really sucks. You can see the Parthians are still causing me issues back here as well. Still, you know, I'm still fighting hard against them. And what, we're 10 minutes into the battle. You know, the Parthians caused me issues for 10 whole minutes, which is why I'm saying I'm surprised that Darren didn't charge me. There was actually a bit of a cavalry engagement over here as well. I guess I get to catch a routing cavalry horse unit right here. Nice archer volley there, and then we, we smash into them. I mean, these are actually medium melee cavalry, so I might have do that great. Oh, and Darren's going to come in with more cavalry. That's what I'm just saying. You can set so many ambushes now. It's awesome. I love it. You really, really can set that up. Again, I'm going to be moving over all my horse archers to harass this. I'm kind of okay with taking missile engagements. But also, I have no idea what Darren has over here. So he could have infantry spearmen waiting to reinforce this area of the field. Like, you could really do anything. Um, I'm just reforming up my army. But what I was saying before uh, this engagement really kicked off is that I have no archers on my side besides these horse archers, which aren't really a very effective unit. Again, I'm like, oh crap, you know, I'm going to kind of get surrounded here. I don't have the rest of my shock cavalry. Realistically, what I should have done here is brought all my horse over. I still had a lot of shock cavalry. Um, and as we say, like, this cavalry fight's kind of far away from the rest of Darren's forces. But the thing is, as well, I just didn't know how much cavalry he had left. As you can see, he has a lot of horse still left remaining. I'm just going to try and use my horse archers to harass and avoid getting engaged. Because these horse archers can fire on the move, which is really effective. But going back to the main fires, I'm just basically reorganizing my line after that battle, reforming. You know, if only all, these, all this cavalry was over here, and I think I would have been able to win this cavalry engagement quite nicely, if I'm honest, if it was all over there. But yeah, not having range is going to be pretty bad, because I don't really have the heavy infantry to match Darren. Um, however, I also don't really have any archers to match Darren, so... I can't really sit back and skirmish and play defensive. I have to be aggressive, but it's quite hard to be aggressive when your infantry isn't very good and won't really stand. These missiles back here are all javelins, which are going to be extremely vital when it comes to the elephants. I know Darren does have elephants. He is obviously playing as India. India are well-renowned for them elephants. But again, even look at that. Like, I just can't see anything. It really does put the preface on bringing light cavalry to the battle because if you don't have light cavalry, you're going to uh, you know not be able to scout out as effectively. Again, I'm going to be using the Bactrian light cavalry just to you know also scout, but just also just harass. You know, if I can get any extra kills, that would be nice. I managed to find the elephants as well. Uh, these elephants also have some really good bowmen on them as well. Really, really good bowmen. Um, you know, there's not many of them. There's only like 37, I think, bowmen in total, but they're really decent and they rack up some kills. So you can see, you can see right here, Darren has, you know, a big portion of elephants, which are very, very good in the most recent patch. 
they they deployed. Elephants have been kind of buffed and, and brought up to how they how they should be. They're great shock infantry. They don't die that quickly. They still go berserk, but the more well trained ones uh, are, can be a real thorn in the side if you don't focus them down. The armored ones are just like brutal. Luckily, these ones are kind of lightly armored, so they're much easier to try and take out. I think, you know, when me and Darren come to fight, I'm going to have to bring up some of the artillery, the, the Scorpion-esque artillery, to try and pinpoint these guys down with a large portion of Peltis. Luckily for me, I believe Mastodon actually get a Peltis unit in their latest reforms, which is actually kind of doubles as an infantry unit. So that's kind of useful. I'm going to have to use them on my flanks. Uh, which is going to be effective. But right now, I'm just advancing a back in force. You know, uh, it took me a while to reorganize. And if you guys play, you know, massive battles quite regularly, especially against an extra player, being able to organize your army is just so important. When you have reinforcements coming on, you have to quickly move around the unit cards. You have to quickly reform your battle line. And you can just get really, really messy really quickly. Like, it does not take long just to lose complete control of the battle and just not know what's really going on. So as I said, whilst my army's moving into position, we're simply just trying our best to harass. And, you know, it's like the battery of the uh, Parthia battle never happened now. You know, we're just facing off ourselves. It really doesn't like triple speed. What about double speed? There you go. Double speed's a little bit better. Just speed up whilst I'm moving up. And I took, as I said, heavy casualties. I lost large portions of my hoplites. I lost a lot of cavalry. You know, even some of my infantry as well went down. So that, that massive Parthia battle right here was just huge for Darren. Because it basically puts the battle in his favor. I'd say at this point, it's probably 60-40 in his favor. I still have a chance to win this battle, but it's kind of unlikely. However, if the battle was just me versus Darren right away without any Parthians involved, I feel like the battle would have been easily 50-50. Like, there, you know, the battle could have gone either way if I didn't have to engage that Parthian army. Because I would have had, you know, fresher units. I would have had all my cavalry. And, that, you know, I would have had a lot of cavalry. I think I still maybe even outnumber him horse-wise um, right now. You know, and it's going to be hard to use because he has just so much infantry on the field. And I don't really have the infantry to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with him. So I can't really use my cavalry. And you guys will see in a second, he has a lot of spearmen scattered around the back. And normally against that strategy to prevent me from like really coming in, I would use my, my numbers to envelop him. I'd use my infantry to smash forward, wait until he has to bring that infantry forward and then take him out. Because he has, you know, just such a strong box and you know, a lot of infantry, it's very hard for me to achieve that when my front line won't really hold if I engage with these axemen. So I'm also trying to use my cavalry in the back as well. I'm just going to hide these guys. Maybe hope that I can catch him off guard with a rear charge or something. And now my army is just going to come out of the field again. It's just a lot of, you know, moving around. I'm actually going to skip ahead right now because I think I sit here to get all my energy back on my infantry. Because a few of my dudes are, like, tired and winded and stuff. So, yeah, I'll go ahead and just skip ahead to when the battle actually does kick off again. Okay, guys, here we go. The final engagement. I decide that my men have had enough resting and now it's time for battle. So what I did uh, is I've gone ahead and stocked this light infantry on the front line. I mean, I say light infantry, but this is like my main infantry line. But I've gone ahead and stuck these guys on the front part of my of my uh, army, basically just to try and protect my pikemen. The pikemen are going to be the kind of core part of this army. I don't really have many of them. You know, I would love to have more than just five. Uh, but, you know, you, you get what you're given in these head-to-head -head battles because, you know, I'm not playing as Bactria, so... Whatever Bactria have, I just have to do it as much as I can with them. Again, I try and move my cavalry around the flank. I realize that I kind of have somewhat of a cavalry engagement. However, I immediately get engaged upon by this javelin unit. And that's going to harass and take down you. Javelins melt cavalry if they can get some tosses off. And also, this is really, really bad for me. Because, like, look at this. I I'm trying to outflank Darren. But he has infantry just everywhere. Also, these elephants are extremely scary. One of my cavalry, actually, yeah, all my cavalry actually gets caught off here, which is a little bit unfortunate. However, I believe I throw this cavalry through the gap. Yeah, there you go, to try and support and catch that off. But yeah, it's just really, really unfortunate for my lines. And there you go. Also, some of this infantry that I've been engaging beforehand are going to be fighting. Um, and I'm going to actually be fighting some of Darren's axemen right now. And these guys, look at that shock damage they just do. These are battery and axemen he's got from area of recruitment. And they're just devastating my battle line. You know, and that unit already routed, which is just not a good sign um, that they're already routing you. Know, my line is a bit dismayed, but it's nothing too crazy. And also, it's really hard to 
to know what this infantry is because I don't know what a Tabarang Su De is. You know, I don't know what that is. And looking at it from like this, you know, in these massive battles, this is how I'm looking at the battle. So it's one. It's really hard to kind of realize if you're going up against axemen or archers or skirmishers half the time. And you really actually, you know, sometimes it is worth just you know, surveying the enemy battle line to see what they have. So my pikemen are up here now. I try to go for a really dense formation just to break these hoplites. Now in this patch, hoplites aren't very good. I'm actually going to engage him and then put my pikes down, which again. It's just a, it's a really bad move looking back on it. You don't want to do that against pikes because you give pikes the advantage um, and allow them to... Oh my god, that guy's getting punched. Jesus. <laughs> um, yeah, now I put my pikes down. But obviously the, uh, the heavy phalanxes are now in range so they can basically do loads of damage. With phalanxes, you want to obviously keep the enemy... At di or with pike phalanxes, you want to keep the enemy at a distance. And it's just something I didn't really do. And that's largely down to me panicking because I didn't have the missile advantage. You know, I didn't want Darren just to run away from me. So I was like, crap, we need to go ahead and push this. And we need to try and be really aggressive. So I'm throwing in my pikes just to get them engaged. Um, and again, not having missiles is kind of brutal because I couldn't, you know, whittle down these axemen at all. Not that I even realized. And here we go. I'm going for a big cavalry charge here. I'm trying to route this unit of infantry on the flanks, try and get that out of the way. But Darren is going to be coming in with a big portion of his men. I'm also bringing over all my skirmishers as well. And if we take a quick look of the overall battlefield, you can see I've got cavalry around the back. But look at this. Darren has so many spearmen back here. You know, and I'm still being like outflanked as well, which is crazy. A lot of my infantry are just dwindling away. Uh, just not very good. Maybe I do have too much. I feel like I don't even have that much infantry. Uh, I guess my strength was really the cavalry, but Darren's doing such a good job of negating that. He's also bringing his elephants around. Elephants do really decently against cavalry, so it's a good thing to try and bring these guys down. And I just don't have either the skirmisher cavalry or the, the, the long-range missiles to try and rout these guys. You know, if you bulk up elephants, it's extremely hard to bring them down. And Darren's going to be throwing them in against my general. Um, also, you know, somehow, I mean, I guess not somehow, I've got a lot of cavalry back here. And I guess that's allowing Darren to really come around the flank. His archers as well are just focusing down my big gaps. Again, I've kind of got a few too many infantrymen clumped up here. Could have definitely used them elsewhere. My left flank has already crumbled. The Bactrian infantry I got given just were not good at all, unfortunately. They're doing a little bit better in the center. I guess maybe these are the ones who didn't fight as heavily against the Parthians, so they're a little bit fresher. And I guess Darren's not really being aggressive with his front line either. I think if he attacked, he'd probably do a lot more. So I brought over my javelins, and they're going to be doing their best to harass the elephants, uh, trying to take them out. You know, this is the best case scenario I can bring them. Four units of javelins to take these guys down. And I am starting to kill quite a few of them, which is good. The more of these elephants we kill, the better. Uh, it's, it's just a shame I didn't have any... Uh, it's, yeah, it's just a shame I didn't have any archers to hit these guys earlier. Because the archers could have done a great job with fire arrows, you know, disrupting them, causing them to rampage like they're doing right now. They actually do get a really good rampage into my battle line. Um, however, they're still going to, you know, basically end up dying, um, which is going to be good. I'm going to pull back my dude soon, though, very, very quickly. My general has also routed. I believe he comes back from routing. And, yeah, as I said, Darren Yu just has the infantry advantage, so he can commit his spears elsewhere. And he doesn't need as much infantry uh, around these flanks because, you know, he just really does work. You know, look at this. I managed to break Darren here, and I'm going to charge off some archers, but then he just quickly goes ahead and deploys, you know, some more of his heavy infantry to, to kind of stem the bleeding there. And this is kind of what I wanted to do in this battle, was I wanted to get to this point where I'm breaking his front line, and then he's forced to move up this kind of reserve line into the battle. However, I just kind of didn't have the quality to, to make that happen. I didn't have the quality to harass his front line. Because, you know, if you think about it, if, if I was playing in this battle with Macedon, with my army, I would have had the quality to push back these axemen, force Darren to commit his back line, and then that's when my cavalry could pounce and really come in and, and cause some issues. But then again, Darren, you know, would play this battle differently if it was, uh, you know, my soldiers. He's also got some really good bowmen, you know. Look, look at this. I just don't have the cavalry left, unfortunately. But, I mean, right here, you know, there's just two archers completely by themselves now. And as I said, these uh, longbowmen are extremely good. They have, if we can look at their range, actually. Yeah, they have 247 range. 250 range on some longbowmen. 
It's just insane how good these guys are. There's going to be a focus of mine to kill them as quickly as possible. It really is uh, when me and Darren come to fight, which, as I said, is not that far off, honestly. But now the rest of the battle, Darren has it under control, really. Uh, there's still four minutes left. I'm going to try and do as much damage as I can to this army. Because, again, you know, I don't really care if I lose this Bactrian army. I don't care if Darren kills Bactria. Uh, however, if I can get some good kills, if I can drain more of a population... That'll be good. And I do manage to find a gap again, as I said, you know, this is exactly what I wanted to do. I wanted to find gaps in this line and use my cavalry to break through. I do manage to get a nice charge off onto these archers, killing quite a few of them. Um, but, you know, Darren's quickly got more infantry to come in and basically surround the rest of my horse. I still have a few, like, as I said, like, a few of my infantry still holding, like, the phalanxes and the, uh, the pikemen. I just didn't have enough of them, really. Uh, you know, I'm doing good in the front against the axemen. But, I mean, that, this battle was awesome. Like, you just don't get this from a normal online battle, you know. There's a lot at stake in these engagements. Uh, I think I do actually manage to kill one of Darren's generals as well. Darren's having a really hard time protecting his generals. And I'm getting quite lucky at uh, slaying them on the battlefield, which is nice, you know. Dar I think Darren is very aggressive with his generals. You know, he uses them as just another cavalry unit, which can be so rewarding. But it's also really risky. And I feel like because of that... He's, he's, you know, kind of losing a couple more generals than he does. But, you know, it pays off in quite a few other battles. So it's that risk and reward kind of system. Get another good cavalry charge. You know, because what would have been a... What, what I should have done, if I would have had the time and I was playing as probably Macedon, what I should have done is I should have just charged these Axemen. You know, if, that, if I play Macedon and Darren puts these Axemen on the front line, I'm either going to demolish them with Rhodian Slingers, Cretan Archers or Armenian Archers... Um, or I'm just going to charge them with heavy shock cavalry and basically just do so much damage to them on the charge because I can't imagine these guys have great bracing. My last couple pikemen as well, fighting away bravely. I also managed to kill a few elephants as well, so not the end of the world. But yeah, the battle is going to be over. Darren just had far too much infantry and I didn't have enough. Like, Darren just had the infantry and the infantry quality, which meant that he just basically nullified my cavalry advantage, which was really, really good of him by using his boxes and now the battle is basically over he's just going to surround me take me off and uh, kill me i think does he only have one unit of elephants left maybe the other unit of elephant routed uh which is kind of decent yeah it's a shame i didn't have more of these bad boys more of the heavy phalanxes and pikemen you know if i would have had like 10 pikes i think the battle would have been very different because i could have used that to basically cover the entire front line and then that wouldn't create so many gaps i could have used the axemen on the flanks and maybe the battle would have been very different. Also, you know, the battle maybe would have been very different as well if I didn't have to commit as much cavalry as I did to the Parthian side of the battle as well. Because then Parthians took a while, you know, then Parthians took a third of the battle to kill and killed a lot of my horses. So maybe if I had a couple more horses, I could have won that right hand side and then maybe even came in and attacked other ways and tried to push forward and you know, more rear flanks and side flanks. Who knows what could have been. But, you know, sometimes the battles are never going to be in your favor. And most of the time they're not. Because whenever me and Darren fight these battles, we're going to try... Until we fight each other, we're always going to try to have the battle in our favor, right? So it's going to be up to the other person. Not necessarily to win, but just to do as much damage as possible. And there we go. That's going to be the end of a battle. So as you can see... A lot of men being committed to this battle. As the Bactrians, I had 8,500, mainly because these Axemen had 300 men in their unit. Um, and as you can see, they, they did okay, in all fairness. But just, you know, look at these. These Axemen getting 500 kills, 300 kills. The Elephant's doing amazingly. Um, yeah, I think this is the general I managed to kill. And his bowmen as well. They're going to be so scary to fight when me and Darren come to fight, uh, for sure. And he, he did lose 2,000 men, which is good. Uh, it might not look like a lot, but in these head-to-head -head battles, um, you know, in DI as well, you don't tend to, the winner doesn't tend to lose because they get a lot of their men back from routing and stuff. Whereas I necessarily don't, you know, the army basically gets cut down as the soldiers run. Um, also, you know, a Parthian army as well. But you know, if you take, if you discredit these kills, you know, this is a thousand kills, and most of them were horses. If you discredit them, then 
who knows what could have been. It was a great battle though. Um, and if you guys want to check this out, as I said, we'll be streaming this. We stream it every Tuesday and Thursday. We're taking like a two-week break over Christmas though. And then we'll be back. So the best way just is to follow me on Twitch. The link will be down below. And also go ahead and um, check out my Discord as well. I always at everyone whenever we go live on, on Twitch. So it's the best way to keep up to date. But yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I felt like my commentary was a bit shit this time. Uh, there's a couple of days since I last recorded so maybe I just need to warm up my voice a little oh also look at this infantry 500 kills on it god damn that's good but yeah hopefully you guys enjoyed I'll see you guys in the next one and fish out